It was a quiet night until the party animal came to town. There's a super party animal. Hey! His name is Buzz McKenzie. Buzz McKenzie! A red hot man and a cold but life puts him in a party frenzy. <laughs> He's Buzz McKenzie, Bud Light's original party animal. Go Buzz! Go Buzz! Go! Oh, yeah! Buzz, Buzz. Hello and welcome back to Brand Management, the show that explores the history of your favorite brand mascots. Today we take a look at Spuds McKenzie. In 1843, Eberhard Anheuser, a German soap maker, moved to St. Louis, Missouri. When the local Bavarian Brewing Company was facing hard times, Anheuser took control of the brewery and renamed it E. Anheuser & Company. In 1857, Adolphus Busch, also a German immigrant, moved to St. Louis, where he eventually met and married Lily Anheuser, the daughter of Eberhard, and began working at the family brewery. Under the leadership of Anheuser & Busch, the company continued to grow, and in 1879, the company's name was changed to the Anheuser-Busch Brewing Association. In 1876, the company introduced Budweiser, an American-style lager which would go on to become the company's most popular product. Over the next 100 years, Budweiser would expand and become one of the best-selling beers in America. Born of tradition, nurtured by pride. Budweiser Light, with a clean, distinctive taste, and a light beer worthy of the king of beers. In 1982, to compete with the hugely popular Miller Light, Anheuser-Busch introduced Budweiser Light, which was renamed to simply Bud Light two years later. For the first five years, Bud Light had no mascot and relied on catchy slogans to attract customers. Never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Whoa. Bud Light. In 1987, Bud Light was given its first mascot, which was created by 23-year-old John Moore, a Chicago-based bull terrier named Honey Tree Evil Eye was selected to play this new mascot. Spuds McKenzie made his first appearance on a poster, in which he wore a fraternity sweatshirt and sat behind a goblet of Bud Light. The poster gave him the title, The Original Party Animal. The posters were a hit on college campuses across the nation, and soon Budweiser wholesalers began pushing for Spuds McKenzie to appear in commercials. Spuds McKenzie made his first television appearance during the 1987 Super Bowl. The ad featured Spuds rolling up to a club in the back of a limo, where he became the life of the party and gained the attention of beautiful women. The ad was a hit, and Spuds McKenzie mania spread across the country. Spuds continued to appear in commercials, where he was usually joined by his trio of Spudettes. The commercials tended to follow the same formula, in which Spuds would show up to a party and quickly become the life of it. Spuds McKenzie merchandise was in high demand. Macy's stores in New York devoted entire sections to Spuds, where customers could purchase shirts, dolls, mugs, and just about anything else you can imagine. Spuds McKenzie became the highest selling poster in the country with second place going to TV's ALF. Spud's signage could be spotted in bars everywhere. Times weren't always a party for Spuds, though. A few months after his debut, rumors began to spread that Spuds McKenzie had died. Tales of limo, plane, and hot tub accidents 
came from different parts of the country. Mild controversy arose when it was found out that Honey Tree Evil Eye was actually female. And highly controversial U.S. Senator Strom Thurmond claimed that spuds encouraged children to drink. Nonetheless, Spuds McKenzie's popularity continued growing, as did the popularity of Bud Light, with the beer seeing a 20% growth in sales. There's a vacancy at the Bates Motel. Norman, is that you? No, it's Spuds McKenzie! The 1987 Bud Light Fright Night sweepstakes allowed fans to win a party with Spuds at the Psycho Mansion. That spuds is so cool, it's scary. <laughs> At Christmas time, spuds could be seen as Santa, Rudolph, and in a sweater on various promotional items. Cases of Bud Light featuring spuds as Santa were a controversy in Ohio where laws prevented Santa from being used to promote alcohol. Now, let's meet one of the favorites in these summer games. From St. Louis Mo, to the Hall of Soul, he's Spud McKenzie! During the 1988 Winter and Summer Olympics, Spuds McKenzie appeared in ads where he played for the American team. He could be seen playing hockey, skiing, and even pole vaulting. Spuds McKenzie released two albums, original party songs, and Spuds McKenzie's party faves were compilations of classic rock hits. Everybody's favorite party animal, Spuds McKenzie! At the height of his fame, Spuds would appear on talk shows. He was always joined by his spudettes, who were there to translate for hosts who didn't speak party animal. Tell he's really excited tonight. <laughs> now, Sandy, she called him Mr. McKenzie. Doesn't he know he's a dog? Oh, he's yeah, not a dog. D word don't say now. The D word is don't no. Say that D -word. He doesn't know. He, he's not a dog. He's a party animal. The number one. <laughs> Unfortunately for Spuds McKenzie, the party had to come to an end. Advocacy group Mothers Against Drunk Driving and the Center for Science in the Public Interest further pushed claims that Spuds McKenzie promoted alcohol to children. Schools across the country banned children from wearing Spuds McKenzie shirts. While the Federal Trade Commission found no proof that Spuds was aimed at children, the damage was done, and public interest in the character was beginning to fade. I knew he was going to be here. This is going to be one great party. During the 1989 Super Bowl, Spuds appeared in a different kind of commercial. The ad featured a more mellow party where Spuds played a guitar and promoted the slogan, Know when to say when. Know when to say when. A reminder from Anheuser-Busch. Anheuser-Busch retired Spuds McKenzie in 1989, claiming that the character's popularity had overshadowed the product he promoted. After a few years of retirement, Honey Tree Evil Eye passed away of kidney failure in 1993. Spuds McKenzie's legacy has lived on through homages and parodies in media. A character named Slurms McKenzie appeared on Futurama, and a 2003 episode of The Simpsons featured Santa's little helper becoming Suds McDuff. During 2017 Super Bowl, Spuds McKenzie returned. <gasps> Hello, Brian. Spuds McKenzie? An ad featured a man choosing to stay home alone while his friends 
partied. The ghost of Spuds McKenzie appeared to share with him what he was missing out on. Perhaps this isn't the last we'll see of Spuds McKenzie. Maybe one day he'll return to remind us all how to party. Responsibly, of course. Thank you for watching the latest episode of Brand Management. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe.